Hi, this is Hank Hennegraaff, president of the Christian Research Institute and host of the Bible Answer Man broadcast with another Hank Unplugged Short. Today's short, I want to talk about why the redefinition of marriage is such a transcendently serious matter. I think the first thing that comes to mind is is great Western philosophers like like Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, who uniformly believed that marriage was to be a relationship between men and women. In fact, in my tradition, in the Judeo-Christian tradition, marriage is rooted in something. It's rooted in the dual gender distinct nature of our humanity. And as such, well, intercourse is seen to consummate marriage as a multifaceted mystery, a mystery in which two people are forged together as one flesh. In this mysterious union, a man and a woman, therefore, procreate children who are fashioned in the image and the likeness of their creator. But sexual union is even more profound than that. Marriage, well, marriage is a mysterious parable of Christ and his church. It's a poignant portrait a portrait of the unity of Christ and his bride. And this is not about cherry-picking verses from the Bible to make a case. Why? Because the parable has its roots in Genesis and then bears ultimate fruit in the book of Revelation. In other words, it encompasses the entire panoply of Scripture. It's the congruent construct of the Bible as a whole. Human history rooted, rooted in the union of Adam and Eve and then yielding its fruit in the wedding supper of the Lamb, in the full complement of God's people prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. It's a divine meta-narrative, a meta-narrative that transcends our individual marriage narratives. If you alter the definition, you alter the institution itself. Let me say something that's memorable. I have to memorize things, uh, and so I try to produce them in my mind so that I can remember things if I'm explaining it to someone. Maybe you don't need that, that little, uh, that little help, but I do. So let, let me say there are ABCs to marriage. I always think of it as anthropology, biology, and civics. So anthropology. From an anthropological perspective, men and women enjoy strategic complementarity. And therefore, both are essential in the rearing of children. Why? Because because fathers challenge their progeny in developmentally vital ways that, that mothers simply cannot, and mothers can do things fathers simply cannot. They provide care and nurture in ways that a male cannot. And then there's the biological reality. Biology. Biology says that sexual reproduction requires male and female. Think about it. Every organ in the human body is self-sufficient to perform its intended function, except, except for one. Natural reproduction always, always, always requires a coupling of male and female. So you have anthropology and biology, and then you have civics. It's not too much to say that that if you redefine marriage, you end up opening Pandora's box, and then you spell the death knell to civil society. If you redefine marriage, 
you end up eroding the rational basis for rejecting aberrations ranging from group marriage and polygamy to incest. Because if there's no special virtue in opposite sex marriage, you have to ask yourself this question, is there any magic in the number two? Or or why arbitrarily assign 18 as the magical age of consent? So once, once civil society abandons the biblical definition of marriage, well, then there's no limit to where our unsanctified passions will, will eventually lead us. This is certainly one of the crises that threatens to undo Western civilization. And the church must be united in upholding the definition of marriage that has withstood the test of time. Unfortunately, many churches are are capitulating to the culture. They're reflecting the culture rather than reforming the culture. Maybe I should say transforming the culture. This is a hill on which to take a stand. I hope you will. Thanks for tuning in.